Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 5th and the 12th of May 2018. I got a remark from one of my viewers, I don't remember her name, that uh, she wouldn't consider this as evolutionary information. Uh, first of all, thank you for your comment. I do include many things that are not of the uh, evolutionary school in these messages. But I am an evolutionary astrologer and the whole paradigm I look into astrology with is evolutionary. But I do love to add some things from the outside. So what kind of week are we heading into? Well, we're heading into an intense time with our communication and understanding between people. A time that is much more volatile, a time that could be much more aggressive, a time that could be rebellious. Time that we really need to be aware of how we state things and how we spill them out and the consequences they might have and if we could phrase them better or articulate them in a way that is less harmful or poisonous both for us and people around us. Other than that we're walking into a time in which we can feel strengthened in which we can feel very creative but I would say that more than everything, this is a time for reckoning with our egos, our words, and the way we navigate our life. So let's go into the details. Saturday the 5th, we have a very beautiful morning. I want to just state that all the times I'm saying are in Central European time. If we are talking about the United States, well then you have to move it about 8 hours behind for Eastern Standard Time and about... 10 or 11 hours to Pacific time. So Sunday morning, that's uh, Saturday night for you Americans. Sunday morning we have the moon trying Neptune. It's a very creative time. It's a very uh, uh, artistic time. It's a very spiritual time. It's a time that our femininity is heightened and we can talk to the muses. Saturday is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's a Friday night for you Americans. It's Saturday uh, morning for us Europeans. Um, it's, Saturday is not a good day to make decisions. It's not a good day to work with your uh, left brain, left hemisphere. Um, it's not a day to uh, go through your bills. It's a great day to do anything creative or spiritual or go outside to nature. Um, the moon is going to square Mercury, so don't make any important decisions. Uh, and by nighttime, that's morning time, you Americans, by nighttime, the moon is going to conjunct Pluto, and that's a time to be aware, not to be too obsessive about what we want to do or how we feel about things, and not to be too dramatic. On the 5th, we're starting the Eta Aquarid meteor showers. They're more apparent in the southern hemisphere, you can see up to 60 meteors per hour after midnight mostly for the next three days it comes from Aquarius it's the Halley's Comet uh, uh, the breeze and if you are in the northern hemisphere about 30 uh, 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 meteors an hour Sunday the 6th we're having the Sun sextile Neptune now we're feeling all these uh, solar um, transits all through the week so when the sun sextile is Neptune, again, our femininity is heightened, we can talk to the muses, we could be more creative, we could be more spiritual. On that day, the Capricorn morn is conjunct Mars in the morning, so Sunday morning is quite hectic and intense. Don't, uh, uh, don't let that uh, aggressive shower go over you. Utilize the energy, utilize it for sports, utilize it for... Uh, uh, doing some uh, um, fixing at the home or working in the garden. Just be careful if you are on the roads or you are working. Uh, be more aware from accidents on that time. Um, at night time, I'm sorry, at the, at the afternoon, there's a square to Uranus, which really uh, takes away our patience even more. We want to get forward, we want to get uh, uh, moving, and we don't have enough uh, patience to wait for others around us. Just be mindful of that. Monday the 7th, emotional day, moon on the south node. We could be a little melodramatic. Mercury is squaring Pluto exactly on Monday the 7th. 
and it will it will square Mars on Saturday the 12th so our communication through this week really needs to be a little less intense a little less aggressive um, more articulated more modest more considerate more sensitive and not so headstrong um, Aquarius moon is going to try Venus on Monday the 7th so regarding relationships and regarding our satisfaction this could actually be a wonderful day uh, Tuesday the 8th we have Venus squaring Neptune when Venus squares Neptune again it's something that we feel all along the last week and the next week and that square to Neptune makes us very romantic and a little uh, too naive about our relationships or about the way we draw up income and we draw an income and, and satisfaction into our lives and regarding our own self-value but the square to Neptune is the time that this illusion and naivety could actually be shattered by reality we could feel disillusioned we could feel that if we, we've been cheated in some way within our relationships or the way we draw in funds or maybe regarding what we thought about ourselves as well it's a time <clears throat> that we could be presented with a picture that is too pink to be real and we need to be realistic and, and see behind that veil even if a person walks into our lives we need to question the motives we need to question if we really know this person and not be too naive about it uh, the Aquarius moon is going to square Jupiter on that day. It's a very um, busy day in the heavens. And when the moon squares Jupiter, just don't be too extravagant. Be discreet. Be modest. Be professional. Don't take too much upon your shoulders. And that actually is fortified by the fact that not only the moon is squaring Jupiter on that day, the sun at nighttime is going to oppose Jupiter on the 8th and the 9th Jupiter is going to be in opposition it's the brightest time of the year that we could see him so if you have a binoculars or even if you have a telescope go outside at night look at the sky find him is going to be bright all through the night especially after midnight it's better to see him and even with binoculars you could see the moons and you could see the stripes if you have a telescope it's going to be a feast so when Jupiter evolutionary speaking astrology speaking when Jupiter opposes the Sun what is the Sun we are the Sun it is us it is who we are it's our self-realization it's the light that emits off us onto this world and how people perceive us because of it it's the mark that we leave behind it's how we contribute personally to life and when Jupiter the planet of spirituality the planet of our um, ideas and 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 um, beliefs opposes the sun this is a time that we need to see ourselves in full light maybe we're talking the talk but we're not walking the walk we are aware of the gap between the two more fiercely and and not always in a good way we could be we could receive that awareness through either people uh, putting us in our place and saying hey I think you're 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 you've over expanded what you believe in because you're still not actually there you're still not up to what you're preaching that's one way this could follow through the other way is that we could think that we're omnipotent and put too much upon our shoulders and then see that uh, we get exhausted and we can't do it it's a time to be modest it's time to recognize our limitations and to be professional about things another way we could uh, uh, be aware of the gap is by seeing people who are too self-centered themselves or we could be too our self-centered ourselves and 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 finally understand that we could see people who are too egotistic and 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 not living their own truth or we could see that upon ourselves and it's a time to to reckon it's a time to reckon and to um, bridge that gap as much as possible 
it's a time also to see and to um, gaze at all our beliefs and see if maybe they need to be adapted according to who we grew up to be, according to how we change, according to what we do right now. Maybe, um, maybe the way we, we, we see the world and our philosophies need to adapt and change as well. And since Jupiter is in Scorpio and the Sun is in Taurus, this really has to do a lot with the material and spiritual equilibrium in our life. It's the 2-8 axis. So the Sun in Taurus is all the physical, materialistic um, existence that we live in. And the Scorpio is the more shamanistic, spiritual, psychological, sexual, everything, all the currents that run underneath the surface that are not apparent to the eye, that are more emotional in nature, that belong to the animalistic part and the anima, the animals, and not the cerebral parts, and not the materialistic parts, and also to the realms of others. If Taurus is myself and my assets and my body, well, then Jupiter in Scorpio is the other's body and assets. So there could be a play between me and others. I could meet important people. I could uh, see the importance of people for the first time in my life. And hopefully this could lead to a greater equilibrium in the future. The moon is going to be in Pisces, sextiling Uranus in the morning. So it's an innovative morning. On Wednesday it's a time that we could be extra bright um, it's sextile Saturn at night so it's actually a good day to take things forward it's a good day to try new things it's a good day to work strategically uh, to better our aims and Thursday is a very very busy day that's in the sky the 10th and um, I would really suggest that if you you could uh, Make plans for Thursday, business plans, personal plans, do it. It's a very energetic day. It starts with the Pisces moon conjunct Neptune. Uh, and, and that's a great time to go outside. It's a great time to enjoy yourself. It's a great time to do anything creative or spiritual. Not a good time to do anything cerebral or analytic. Uh, it's going to try in Jupiter a little later on so we could really enjoy ourselves. We can expand our uh, connections and horizons. Uh, by the afternoon, it already squares Venus, so don't overdo it. Don't overdo it, don't overindulge. And then it sextiles the sun and it sextiles Pluto in the evening and night. So if you can go out on Thursday night, if you can host, if you can get hosted, just enjoy yourself. It's a very energetic time. Friday the 11th is also a very energetic day, but it's more of a day that I would suggest to do some work at home, to do some physical activity, to do all the errands you couldn't do the day before or through the week. It's an Aries moon, it's sextiles Mars, and it's a, it's a wonderful time to utilize that energy uh, physically. Um, or sexually. I didn't say that. <laughs> Saturday the 12th, we're having the Sun trining Pluto. Again, something that we could feel all through the week and through next week. It's a time that we can draw inner strength, that we need ourselves to rely on, not other people. And um, we have to be careful not to think of ourselves as too good, too strong, and so on and so forth. Mercury is squaring Mars Saturday the 12th. So again, our communications could be too aggressive, could be too confrontational, um, we could be too moody with our words and how we state things, so just watch it. Aries Moon is squaring Saturn on that day. That adds up to the whole mix and um, provides a little less uh, self-confidence and a little too much judgment. So again, watch it. And regarding our communications, also next week looks intense with uh, Mercury or Anus conjunction, which is also a time that we could be extra bright, even genius, think outside the box, get epiphanies. But it is also a time that we could get, you know, upset really quickly. Our tempers could fly high in a second and, and we, could, um, we could lose it. So be careful with that. Also, Mars is going to square around us next week. 
we have our uh, communication field cut out for us. So that's about it. I want to thank you for sharing. I want to thank you for commenting. I want to thank you for liking. It spreads these videos to more people. And um, I really appreciate that. And of course, for private consultations, uh, classes and courses or any question you might have about astrology, please feel welcome to contact me. So I hope you're going to have a wonderful week and I'm, I know you're going to be amazing with everything you're dealing with and everything that's on your table. And that's it. Just keep in touch. And if you have anything specific you want to ask me, I'm here. Thank you for listening. Have a beautiful, beautiful week. Bye-bye.